Welcome to the vCloud Automation Center demo, configuring single machine blueprints. During this demo, we are going to show you the administrator experience of how to create a single machine blueprint within the vCloud Automation Center. First, we will log into the vCloud Automation Center as a group manager. As a group manager, we will walk through the steps required to configure a single machine blueprint. We will focus on a virtual machine blueprint, but it is important to note that creating physical or cloud blueprints also follow a very similar process. Once the blueprint is created, we will then log into the cell service portal and see that our newly created blueprint is available for our users. The vCloud Automation Center has three primary policies used to implement user-centric, business-aware cloud management. The first is business groups. The vCloud Automation Center allows administrators to define a multi-level grouping structure and associate users from Active Directory with one or more groups and have specific role-based access within those groups. Second, we have resource reservations. Reservations allow administrators to allocate previously discovered virtual, physical, or cloud resources to each group. As part of assigning resources to a group, you can associate costs to those physical resources. Resource reservations can be grouped by service level as part of the reservation process. When users request machines, they will be charged based on a prorated consumption of these resources. And the third policy is service blueprints. Blueprints define the policies that will control the provisioning and ongoing management of a vCloud Automation Center compute service from the initial request, provisioning, ongoing management, and decommissioning. This lifecycle management can be unique for every blueprint defined in the system. This demo will focus on the third policy around service blueprints. Blueprints define much more than just how a machine will be deployed. The administrator sets all the policies and controls that will define the full lifecycle management of that resource. From what happens at request time, through the approval and provisioning of that resource, the ongoing management of the resource, and all the way through decommissioning. Each blueprint can be unique per resource, per group, and per user. Let's log into the vCloud Automation Center as a group manager. The group manager is responsible for creating and managing blueprints for their group and organization. As a group manager, you are authorized to view dashboards and reports of resources that have been granted to your department. You are also able to request and manage your resources through your own self-service link. This demo will focus on the group manager's role of creating single machine blueprints for their users. Under the Provision Group Manager tab on the left hand side, we will select Blueprints. From the Blueprints page, to create a new blueprint, select New Blueprint in the upper right hand corner. You will be presented the options to create a cloud blueprint, a multi-machine blueprint, a physical machine blueprint, and a virtual machine blueprint. This demo will walk through the creation of a virtual machine blueprint. The process for creating cloud and physical blueprints is very similar to that of a virtual blueprint. A separate demo will be available describing how to create multi-machine blueprints for your users. Remember, when creating blueprints within the vCloud Automation Center, you are defining the full lifecycle management of that resource, not just how that resource will be deployed. To simplify the process, the blueprint creation is broken up into four tabs. Each tab will guide you through the creation process. The first tab, Blueprint Information, is used to provide general characteristics about the resource. For our demo, we will configure a base Windows 2008 R2 blueprint running on our vSphere infrastructure. Let's start to configure our blueprint. The name and description fields will be visible to the end users, so it is important to provide clear and descriptive information. Let's fill in our information. Let's select an icon that will be displayed in the cell service portal. Note administrators can create and add their own icons to the available list. Let's go ahead and select an icon. Blueprints can be global, shared across provisioning groups, or private. We will create a private blueprint for the development group. Reservation policies can be used to enforce SLA and placement of our resource. Since we intend to have our virtual machine deployed on our vSphere infrastructure, we will select the vSphere 5.1 reservation policy. This will enforce all machines deployed using this blueprint are built on the intended infrastructure. 
The prefix defines the naming convention used for each machine deployed from this blueprint. Since we have already defined the group naming convention, we will leave the default option selected here. Note, it is possible to override this default option. Many resources required an approval process. The vCloud Automation Center provides a rich approval process from single approvals to multi-stage approvals with delegation. Let's go ahead and choose a single approval by the group manager. Blueprints can be enabled and disabled based on company needs. We will enable our new blueprint, which will make this blueprint visible to the group's end users. To simplify the blueprint creation process, managers can copy an existing blueprint and modify for their needs. By checking the master checkbox, we will enable this blueprint to be copied. If the user is required to select the location data center for the resource to be deployed in, you would select the Deploy Location on Request checkbox. For our blueprint, we will use policy to determine placement. Max number per user can be used to restrict the number of resources an end user can request based on this blueprint. We will not enforce this limit in our blueprint. Very often, when a resource is end of life, there may be an archive period required for compliance reasons prior to the resource being deleted. We will define a 30-day archive period for our resource. The vCloud Automation Center provides two mechanisms for determining resource cost. The cost property within the blueprint can be used to define a fixed cost per day for this blueprint. This cost may be associated with the software or operational cost of providing this service. The solution also allows administrators to assign costs to the infrastructure. So depending on where the resource is deployed, will determine the actual cost to the end user group. We will assign a fixed cost of 50 cents. Let's move on to the next tab in configuring our blueprint. The build information tab is used to specify how the machine will be deployed and what build parameters will be presented to the requester. As we select the different options presented to us, the web page will reload based on our previous selection. The intent is to simplify the process by only presenting options based on your platform and build needs. Let's walk through the process. Our platform will utilize cloning on the vSphere platform. As such, we will choose vSphere for our platform type. But as you can see, there are quite a few other choices for managing your virtual environment. Blueprint type is where you will specify if this is a server or desktop request. The action describes the type of provisioning that will be performed. We will choose cloning for our request. Based on the platform type, blueprint type, and action, you will be presented with one or more available provisioning workflows. Refer to the operations guide for more detail if you are unsure which workflow is required for your needs. Because we have selected cloning, we then must choose the vSphere template to clone from. Note, these have been discovered during the data collection process. Let's choose our Windows base template. To further customize the machine, you may specify the customization specification if one is available within Virtual Center. We will utilize a customization spec with our template. In Virtual Blueprints, the memory, CPU count, and storage specifications determine the resource allocated to the virtual machine. If you supply a maximum, the machine requester can optionally increase the specification up to that limit. If you select an approval policy on the Blueprint Information tab and use one or more maximum specifications, you can also set approval thresholds. Only machines for which the requester sets one or more of the specifications at or above the approval threshold will require approval. Lease days is the length of the machine's lease, the time until it expires, that can be specified in days. A blank lease setting means no expiration date. Let's set some parameters for our blueprint. We'll give it a lease period of 30 to 90 days. Under volumes, you may specify additional storage volumes that will be presented in the OS. By default, the OS volume in the template is configured. The group manager can also specify the max number of volumes and networks that can be configured per machine. We will leave these blank for our blueprint. The Properties tab is where administrators can select predefined custom properties called Build Profiles or define new custom properties for this resource. 
Like any system or network object, a machine is defined by a number of properties. Examples include the machine's architecture or operating system and the size of its memory and disk. Some properties are reserved by the vCloud Automation Center with a full listing available in the Operations Guide. Other custom properties can be created and specified by the administrator. All custom properties are available throughout the life cycle of the resource. We will choose a build profile that contains both type of properties. The VMware Virtual Center Operating System property is a reserved property, while the cost centers is created for our own needs. The security tab contains the Blueprint's access settings. These include the Blueprint Access defines the usernames of the group members who can request machines from the Blueprint. If everyone is specified, the entire group can own machines provisioned from that Blueprint. Machine operations allow the administrator to select which operations will be available to owners of machines created from this Blueprint. Examples include various power cycle operations, reprovisioning the machine, connecting to the machine, expiring and destroying the machine. The operations available depend on the type of blueprint. Reconfigure and snapshot control are also available and provide administrators the ability to strictly enforce policy around the use of each operation. We will leave the default selections for our blueprint. At this point, we have completed the configuration of our blueprint. Let's go ahead and save the settings by selecting OK. Our newly created blueprint is now displayed in our blueprint list. Finally, let's log into the vCloud Automation Center and see our newly created blueprint from within the self-service portal. Let's go ahead and log in as one of our developers. Now that we are logged in, let's go ahead to the new request page. If we go ahead and take a look at the blueprints and scroll down, we will now see our new blueprint is available to our end users. Thank you for taking the time to watch this video. We hope that it was informative. To learn more about vCloud Automation Center, there are additional videos available. Thank you.